Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Please watch my videos. I got all kinds of topics about how to heal yourself, how to become a better person, how to be happy, how to get over anxiety, how to manage PTSD and depression, all things that I've gone through and that I'm interested in. Let's get right into today's topic. There's no escape. There's no escape from yourself. You can keep running and running and running away but you can't keep running from yourself. That's what Bob Marley said. I even wore my Bob Marley t-shirt today. People use so many different things as a vice. Obviously, maybe people use drugs, pills, alcohol, you know, and stuff like that to inebriate themselves, to escape, to put their mind into a catatonic state. But people also use exercise. You can become addicted to exercise where it gets to be just too much. The funniest ones are the runners. <laughs> people get addicted to exercise. It's, you know, you, you can actually get too much, especially if you're on a calorie deficit, if you're working out too much. Your body, you know, doesn't need as much as a lot of people who get way too into it as they give themselves. And they can be end up with health problems. I've known lots of people who end up with joint problems, bone problems, all kinds of problems with their, with their body because they're pushing themselves way too hard. And the runners are the funny ones because they'll run to the end of the earth to try to escape their problems, but it doesn't work that way. And they feel like for that moment that they're running, they're not thinking about the stress, the drama, the bullshit. They're not overthinking like they normally do. And this works for any vice. But as soon as you stop running, it, it, all your problems come right back. Video game people are the same way. I've known so many people. There's even, you know, articles about this stuff where video game people will uh, use the excuse of playing video games for hours and hours and hours every day because they feel like it's a form of therapy. <laughs> it's not therapy. You know, and people don't understand what therapy is. And they somehow think that therapy is a way to escape your thoughts. I just need to stop thinking for a while. It helps me to, you know, just stop overthinking and to stop thinking about my, my life. So it's, it's my therapy. I've heard this exact statement from so many video game people, just like the exercise people. But a therapy isn't... Ever. I mean, I've been to therapy. I paid for therapy from psychiatrists for almost 10 years. And nobody goes to therapy. Nobody on the planet Earth. Nobody has ever gone to therapy and nobody ever will go to therapy to escape your problems. That's not why you pay all that money. It's expensive. Therapy's fucking expensive. And nobody, no one has ever gone to therapy to escape their problems for just that 45, 50 minutes, that hour session. It's not what you go for. It's not what you pay all that money for. You go there so you can face your problems, so you can, the exact opposite of what the video game people are doing, or some of these exercise people, or the drug addicts, or the alcoholics sitting at the bar. It's the opposite of that. You're facing your problems. That's what's so hard about it. That's what can be so scary about doing self-work, is that you don't get a break. When I went sober, I realized this. I used to use alcohol in particular every day, seven days a week, I was drinking. And even after I stopped doing hard drugs and I could convince myself to not do hard drugs anymore, but the alcohol was so hard for me and it really felt like it was medicine. It was, I needed it. I needed to get drunk, to catch a little buzz at the end of every single day, which that little buzz ended up being getting really drunk. I, I went far beyond that years and years into it and realized I'm getting shit faced every day. And it was my excuse of, well, I have a hard life and I need to be able to have something in order to escape all this bullshit that swirls around inside my head all the time. I need to just have a break. Can I just get a break for a second? It's such extreme weakness. It's such extreme pussy shit. I was the weakest, the king of the weak. <laughs> led the weak like the Pied Piper. I mean, I was the, the, the weakest guy in weak town. I, and I used all kinds of vice. Anything you can think of, I would get into it in order to have this escape that people seem like they need. 
sex can be a, a vice. Not only can you, you can just fuck yourself raw to where you can't even function anymore, but it just gets to be the same type of addiction where you are trying to forget what's chasing you. And what's chasing you is your problems, yourself. So many people have boring, mundane lives where they engage in nothing other than just waking up, going to work, coming home, getting fucked up. And that's basically it. They'll take a vacation once or twice a year. They take care of their families as best as they can at the minimal level. Call it parenting. Call it family time, friendship. And, and, that's, and that alone is too much for them. That is what 90% of America is doing on a daily basis. And that's too much. Right? They need an escape from that. <laughs> from doing nothing all the time. From, from sitting at work, barely working, trying to get out of doing shit. You're not the hardest worker at your fucking job. Most people aren't. If you are, I, I commend you. <laughs> trying to do as minimal parenting as they can, and they call it, oh, well, you know, a parent shouldn't do too much. <laughs> not teaching their kids any lessons, because they don't know any lessons. What lesson are you teaching your kid? How to escape life like a little weak bitch? I know parents that their only time that they bond with their kid is this escape time and they play video games with them. Again, teaching the lesson that when life gets hard, and life's hard because you have this mundane, boring life where you barely do anything, and that's too much for your little weak ass, and the only way I can survive a weak schedule is through more weakness by sitting there checking out, going into a catatonic state. Everything, everybody's so sensitive. They get all upset over something someone said. My boss wasn't nice to me. The person in line wasn't nice to me. And they have to go run to their vice, run to the bar. I had a hard morning. I need a drink. <laughs> I was like this. I'm making fun of people because I was exactly like this. When I sobered up, I realized that all the problems I had been running from since I was a teenager, all of them, were still there. I didn't evolve. I didn't grow up. I didn't grow past them. The, 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 the year that you start getting into your addiction is the year that your brain gets frozen. So I knew lots of guys that started their addictive cycles at 16, 17, and by the time they were 36, they're still 16 or 17 year olds in their fucking heads. They're, they weren't evolving. They could be 46 at 56 and still act like they're little 16-year-olds. And only when you can finally face your fears, face your problems, face all that overthinking that you're scared of doing, instead of running from it, and stop running and face it, then you can, you can grow. And you'll watch, as long as you fight these battles, you'll watch yourself evolve. It's a beautiful process. I feel so much more powerful inside now. So when something happens, I don't have to run from it. If I get a little depressed, I don't have to run from it. I used to run from depression for years, for decades. I ran from depression, decades. When I sobered up, it was all there waiting for me. And one of the most remorseful things there was a couple things that I really had remorse with when I went sober, when I stopped drinking particularly, was the social scene of losers that were all doing the same thing that I used as a blanket, as a comfort zone. I thought these were my friends, but they really weren't. They're just a bunch of losers that are all doing the same thing, all weak motherfuckers running from themselves. But one of the hardest things for me was to realize that now there's no escape. I have to just fucking deal with this shit. And I watched all my friends who could just pound a few beers back, get drunk tonight, and forget about their problems, and they would profess how happy they were. Yet you look at their lives, you look at how fucked up their apartments were, you look at everything, their bodies, everything about them, their thought processes, everything about them, their decisions, everything about them, seemed weak to me all of a sudden now that I was seeing clearly. But they had the luxury 
of slipping into this catatonic state of running from it. And I was forced, tortured, to face it. There was no running anymore. And that was one of the greatest gifts. It felt like a curse. It felt awful at first. But then when I started to do the work, mind, body, and soul work, and really adopt a new lifestyle, become healthier inside and out, I became stronger. And I realized that I don't want to run. I'm not running from nothing. I don't run from anything. I don't run from life. I don't run from people. I don't run from conversations. I don't run from confrontations. I don't run from the horrible things that need to be said and need to be done. I can do that stuff. I can man up and I can do it. I'm no longer the weakest person in the weakest state of mind leading a pack of weak people because I'm not running with them. I had to stand up, stand my ground. And it's, it's not easy. I'm not going to tell you this is easy to do, but it's necessary if you want to evolve as a person. If you want to be able to, in video game people know, if you want to level up, you want to get to that next level, because that's where success is. Success rarely ever comes to the weak people who are living these mundane, boring lives, who have barely anything on their plate at all, and they can't even accomplish that half the time. They can't even clean their goddamn houses half the time. They can't even do anything for themselves half the time. These are the weakest people, and they run from, from just the smallest bit of responsibility. They get overwhelmed like little children on just one or two things that happen on their plate. And if you give them anything to do, even if, if it's at work or family time or anything extra than they're used to, it completely overwhelms them, and they have to go and run into their vices, whatever it is. I just like to make people stronger, that's all. Because being stronger is where it's at. Weak warriors don't make it. Not everybody makes it in this world. Not everybody makes it to the next level. Not everybody makes it to success. Not everybody makes it to greatness. But I strive to do that. I tell myself as a mantra, I am sky and I am great. Tell yourself that. Empower yourself. I get inspired by others when I see other people that are on top of their game even more than me. I'm not the most productive guy. I have bouts of laziness and depression and all that stuff just like anybody else. But when I see somebody that's really doing it, really working hard, that inspires the shit out of me. I'm going to get up out of my chair immediately. I don't care what time of day or night is and go get shit done just because I've seen somebody else who's really doing it. And I'm like, wow, man, if they can do it, I can do it. And I've always been that way, that I feel like that if somebody else can accomplish this, why can't I? And there's plenty of people out there that are a lot stronger than me. There's plenty of people out there a lot stronger than you. Find those people, observe how they live their lives, and take a little taste of it. Stop running from shit. Thanks for watching.